Hey you guys, what's up? Uh, my name is Bastiansen and today I want to show you how to export a video from Adobe Premiere Pro CC. And before we do that, um, I just want to really quick answer a question from one of you out there. Um, Mickey Friedman wrote me last week and asked uh, about my process of planning shots in my videos. And um, basically he asked, uh, what is your process to plan the shots and uh, how do you know what shots you want? Do you improvise? Um, how many shots do you take? I think I just brainstorm a lot and I just imagine how I would want the video to be like in the end without any limitations and then I figure out um, how to make it happen basically. Do you improvise? Yes, I improvise most of the times. Um, but it's, it has something to do with the kind of videos I do. For example, when you have a script and you shoot after a script, then you don't improvise a lot, right? But for example, the 20 second videos or those nature videos like Portugal or India, like you don't have a real script there for different scenes so you just go in and you just see what you what you find and then you just make the best out of that and there are like a lot of critical decisions like, like you have a big toolbox right and your cameras in your toolbox and what it can do and all the functions and your lenses and, and the different uh, characteristics of your lenses and um, and what you can do, like like your movement, for example, I'm shooting mostly like with a fly cam or a glide cam, um, and you can do those um, those flying shots with that. So all those things in your toolbox make you able to um, to just decide um, on location what's the best thing to do. So yeah, I'm improvising a lot. How many shots do you take? Well, that always depends. To give you a number, I just looked it up uh, for the Portugal video. I in the end I had uh, 1113 takes, like single clips, and for the Dust Dance video I had about 200 clips. And um, again, when you have a script, you know what you're shooting, you go like ABC and maybe like a little bit around, but, ba but basically that's it. Uh, when you improvise and when you just have to work with what you find, then you just uh, find yourself um, making sure you want to deliver a good thing to your client, so you like overshooting is never a good thing, but um, just make sure that you have enough stuff to edit with, like to, to go into editing with. So Mickey, thanks for your question, um, really good ones. Um, now I'm going to show you how to export a video out of uh, Premiere, because I got a few messages regarding that kind of stuff. It can be tricky when you don't know what you're doing, because like there are so many things to dial in. So I'm going to show you just my way, how I do it, and um, how I get the results that I like. So, and I think that could maybe help a few of you guys. So I opened up uh, an older sequence, uh, it's one of the 20 seconds episodes, it's uh, episode 11 with Ariel Ross. And um, before you export anything, you want to make sure to play back uh, your edit in real time. And for that, you might have to render it especially when you have stacked up like a few tracks uh, of effects or of um, like different clips like I have here like I have one two three four video clips on top of each other at times and the computer is not able to play that back in real time so what it has to do um, like you want to render it out and what that means is um, the computer bakes in video file and plays back that video file um, so that you can watch it as you would um, like as it will be when it's exported. So um, to do that, you mark an endpoint uh, at the beginning of your sequence. You can do that with a shortcut um, I, or you can just click this mark in button here. Um, then you want to mark your out point. You can use that button or use your shortcut uh, O for out. And then you have marked your sequence and then you just press enter and Premiere will render your video out uh, depending on how many effects and how many crazy things you have going on uh, that could take a while. Okay, so the rendering is done now and as you can see up here this indicator is all green now which basically means that your computer is able to play everything back in real time now. Which is really important because you want to make sure to watch everything uh, from top to bottom from start to finish. Um, to make sure that everything is uh, the way you want it to be. Once that's the case, you click up here on File, 
then of uh, then on export and then media. Okay, so then this window pops open. It's the export settings window in Premiere. And let me just say that for a second. Um, like for different um, purposes, there are different codecs and containers and all of that. But um, like this is this is supposed to be like a very uh, simple standard. I want to render out something to YouTube video. So I'm going to show you my uh, YouTube and Vimeo settings here, which um, actually I do use for client work sometimes. Like it always depends, but these are like pretty solid settings for me. So um, for my format, I choose the H.264 codec. Um, when you click on the output name, you can set like an output folder. Here it's the desktop and an output um, name. And then you hit save down here. Um, you want to export video, audio, obviously that depends on what you're doing, but most of the times uh, that should be checked, I guess. Then my sequence is a full HD 24 frames per second um, sequence shot on a Canon DSLR, which means that the actual frame rate is uh, 23.98. Um, and this you want to dial in here. Then this is a full HD 1920 by 1080. Um, you do want, like, let's say you shot on a DSLR, then you want uh, this to be progressive and not interlaced. Um, next thing, you want to hit the render at maximum depth um, checkbox. And what I do most of the times, I choose the constant bitrate, and then I choose something like 15 here. That gives me pretty good results. Um, then you want to check the use maximum render quality here and the use previews button. What that does is um, while Premiere was rendering your sequence, um, it created like an intermediate video file to be able to play it back in real time. And this file will, um, like when you click use previews, then the encoding of the final export will go quicker. Uh, because of those already rendered uh, parts. So when everything is dialed in now, you can um, either hit the hit the export button down here and it will um, start to export your sequence or what you can do, let's say you have more than one um, sequences or you want to keep working in Premiere while it's exporting, then I suggest you hit the Q button down here and it will fire up the um, Adobe's media encoder. Then it will uh, stack up like all of your uh, sequences in this window and then you can just uh, hit the start button and it will batch through all of those uh, exports and while it's exporting you can actually keep working in Premiere. I use that all the time and it's an amazing feature. Okay guys, that's it already. Um, I want to leave you with a tiny question. Do you prefer to watch videos on Facebook or on YouTube? Uh, because everyone talks right now about uh, the importance of Facebook in the video market, so I want to hear your take on that. Other than that, uh, follow my uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, whatever you want, and I see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.